All right, everybody, let's go ahead and solve an example problem from the heat equation. And you can see over here, I gave you a particular boundary conditions and initial condition. So I have myself the boundary condition as right over here. You can see that at the left hand side of the rod, I have the temperature to be zero. At the right hand side of the rod, it is zero two. And then I, in my initial condition, because the T is equal to zero, is specified as kind of like a little bit off but it starts from 0 to 50, so half of the rod is exposed to this as a function of x, so it's linearly increasing. And you can see, it. so the second half of it, it goes down from 80, right, minus, as I go to the right, my temperature goes down linearly, okay? So to solve these questions after I did the derivation last time around, actually I'll go up, back up over here, so you can see that this is what I'm after, okay? So this will be the solution. And the main thing, just to recap one uh, last time, is this an was the important one. So I'm going to try to find my an and then plug it into over here. So that will be my temperature distribution in my rod at any given time. All right. So, okay, let's just uh, look at this an value. So that will be 2 by L. I'll insert what L is, but let's write the general form of it first. Sine n pi by Lx dx. So that, well, that is my goal of an. And we'll add it because at the end of the day, when I'm done with this question, I have to insert this in. So let's write this summation over n1 to infinity a n, which is up there, e to the minus k n squared pi squared by l squared t times sine n pi by lx. The very first conversation that we're going to have is what is l? It is fairly obvious to you that it is going to be 100, right? So then uh, let's just write it. A n will be equal to 2 by 100. You see where 100 is coming from. Uh, well, I cannot say 0 to 100 though, right? T taking a look at it, uh, I have to divide this into two. One will go from 0 to 50 and then 50 to 100, which is okay, not a biggie. So let's actually wanna make a big bracket because I don't want to forget about this uh, 2 over uh, 50 applying to both. 0.8x, this is my f of x, sine and pi x by 100 dx plus now the second one goes from 50 to 100 and now my uh, f of x is 0 0.8 8 minus 0 0.8 x right um, sine of n pi x by 100 dx and close the bracket okay so the approach that i'm going to take is uh, let's be organized over here so i'm going to call this one i'm going to call this two i'll i'll do them uh, separately as you will see just to give you a flavor i'll have to do integration by parts right but the nice thing is you can see that once i find the integration by parts for here it's the same over here right so it will not be a huge deal after i do the integration by parts okay for the first one i have to do this integration by parts and you clearly see that i have my x to be u my dx to be well, du, right? And my dv is equal to sine n pi by 100 dx. And my v will be, let's be careful over here, minus because it's a cosine, 100 by n pi, right? Um, cosine of n pi x by 100. Okay, we are getting somewhere. Then I'll take it and plug it into here. 0 0.8 stays, it goes out of the integral. And then let's do a bracket over here. So uv, that will be 100x by n pi, cosine of n pi x by 100. And I have to ablate this from 0 to 50. You can see that. Plus, well, let's write 0 0.8 again because I closed the parentheses. Integral 0 to 50. That's going to be 100 by n pi, cosine n pi x by 100 dx. Okay. I'm going to get myself 80, right? 80x by n pi cosine n pi x by 100. So that I need to ablate. Plus, you see over here, when I take the integral of this, I will get another 100 by n pi. So then if I multiply 100 by 100, I'm going to get 10,000. Multiply by 0 0.8 is 8,000, right? Everybody get that? 8,000 by n pi square. No, square of each. And then I'll get myself, obviously, sine n pi x by 100. And I have to ablate this whole thing from 0 to 50. Okay, so the very first one, if I put uh, 50, 4,000, right? Divided n pi, and then I'll get myself cosine of, 
and I have 50, that's going to be n pi by 2, right? Cosine n pi by 2. So when I put 0, what will happen in here is, well, I have an x, so this will vanish, okay? So this is the very first term so far, okay? So let's do the second term. So that will be, well, that's going to stay 8,000 by n squared by square, okay? When I put x is equal to 50, I'll get sine n pi by 2, right? And then when I insert uh, x is equal to 0, I'm not going to rewrite it, but you can see there's no exit here. However, when I insert in here, I'm going to get sine 0. What is sine 0? That is 0. So you can see that this is it in terms of the first term. Okay, so I was able to obtain my first term, so I'm happy. Okay, one thing to highlight is um, when I do the second one, I'll come back over here. I'll have to do this again, but I'm going to use this as a starting point. Now I'm going to put 50 to 100. Okay, everybody? So let's go to the second one now. Let's switch down the color. So integral from 50 to 100 this time around, I'll have 0 0.8, 100 minus x, sine n pi x by 100 dx, which will be basically 80, right? That's the first term. Um, integral 50 to 100, sine n pi x by 100 dx, minus, I ran out of space, uh, 0 0.8 times 50 to 100 x sine n pi x by 100 dx, okay? So this is something that I did before. So, okay, let's uh, analyze uh, term by term. The very first term will be is equal to 80. So when I take the integral of this, I'm going to get myself a negative, right? A, you know, integral of sine is negative cosine. And I'll get 100 divided by m pi. So 100 times 80 is what? 8,000, right? So I'll get minus 8,000 by m pi. And then I'll get myself cosine of m pi x by 100. Again, I have to relate this from 50 to 100. That's the very first one. How about the second one? That's going to be minus up here. Let's copy paste this basic. That's what I'm going to do over here. Minus. Minus 80x by m pi cosine m pi x by 100 plus 8,000 by n squared pi square times I run of space. So sine m pi x by 100. Okay. So I simply copy pasted what I see up there. And again, this needs to be elevated from 50 to 100. So let's start with the first term. So that's going to be minus 8,000 and pi. Um, this will be when I insert x is equal to 100, I'm going to get cosine and pi minus cosine and pi by 2, right? That's what I'm going to get for the very first term. How about the second one? So minus minus becomes plus. So it's going to be 80 uh, by and pi. So I can take that out. I insert 100, I'll get myself, let's write it this way, 100 times cosine of n pi, right? Minus, when I insert uh, n is equal to, uh, x is equal to 50, I'll get 50 cosine n pi by 2. So that's the second term. Let's look at the last term. There's a negative, there's a positive, so it becomes a negative sign. It's going to be 8,000 by n square pi squared, that can be out. And when I insert... Uh, x is equal to 100, I'll get myself sine n pi. When I insert uh, x is equal to 50, I'll get minus sine n pi by 2. Okay, let's see what happens in here. The first thing that I see is this will uh, vanish, right? So that's gone. The other thing that I want to highlight over here is I was uh, realizing that I'm writing. So look at this, cosine n pi, cosine n pi, and this is what, 80 times 100 is 8,000, and I have 8,000 pi and pi. So this, these two terms are the same, right? One is negative, one is positive. So I have some good news that this and this will cancel each other out. Okay. So when I uh, rewrite this then, so it's going to be positive 8,000 by m pi cosine of m pi by 2 minus 4,000, right? 80 times 50 by m pi cosine m pi by 2. Okay, I see simplification, that's good. The last term is plus, right? 8,000 by n square pi square sine m pi by 2. And if I, uh, you know, 8,000 minus 4,000 is 4,000, so I'm going to get myself 4,000 by m pi times cosine m pi by 2 
plus 8000 pi n squared pi squared sine and pi by 2. So that's it for the second term. And if I go back up, or rather rewrite it, no need to go back up, but um, we said a n will be equal to 2 by 100, or 1 over 50, right? Um, 1 plus 2. And I obtained this 1 and 2 separately. So now I will insert that, 2 by 100, let's not forget that. And then the first term was, let's go up, I'll show you. Um, the first term, where is it? The first term was this. Okay, let's do it red. Okay. So, and the second one was this. So I simply rewrite those two. Okay. I sum them up. Minus 4,000 by n pi cosine n pi by 2 plus 8,000 by n squared pi squared sine n pi by 2. The other term, the second term was 4,000 by n pi cosine n pi by 2 plus 8,000 by n squared pi squared sine n pi by 2. Okay, so let me see uh, whether I see any simplification over here. Look at this term, look at that term. So those two vanish, okay? Um, okay, so then actually this term and this term sums up, right? You can look at it in, in here. So this becomes what? 16,000, right? So 8,000 plus 8,000, 16,000 times 2 is 32,000 divided by 100 is 320. Let's be consistent with the colors. I'll get myself a n to be 320 by n squared pi squared sine and pi by 2. Okay, that is my a n. And then I did the most majority of the work. The only thing that's left is simply plugging a n over here and also I'm going to put l wherever I see 100, right? So when all said and done, let's write this in red. U x comma t, so basically my temperature distribution as a function of space as well as um, time is this. I take out 320 by pi squared because it's common in each terms, right? I cannot take out n squared because this is going from n to infinity. So it's going to be sine n pi by 2 divided by n squared, right? So that's my a n e to the minus k n squared pi squared by L square, L square is 10,000, right? L is 100. T times sine and pi by 100 x. So this is it. This is the final version of the equation. One thing I want to highlight uh, is in this particular case, uh, I'm not going to go there, but if n is equal to 2, I'm going to get sine of pi. So I only will be left with 1, 3, 5, 7. All the even months will end up with 0. It will vanish, okay? So this finishes the heat equation. I'll be back with the wave equation. Thank you for watching this.